So I was working at the Brickyard in Boise. It's a cute little fine dining restaurant downtown and the owner prides himself on having a really excellent wine selection and that each wine on his menu really represent the region that it comes from very well. So we were featuring an Idaho wine that month and it happened to be the Cinder Laissez Faire Red Blend. So we were all, of course, able to taste it and talk about it and I immediately fell in love with that wine. It was one of the best Idaho wines I'd ever tried and it kind of opened my eyes to the reality that Idaho is putting itself on the map in the, the wine making culture. I find it interesting that the winery is about 10 minutes from downtown Boise, so all the grapes are crushed, fermented, and produced right there locally, and that she sources all of her grapes from various wineries around the Snake River uh, Valley American Viticultural Area. So they take grapes from Fraser, Skyline, as well as Sawtooth wineries. The wine that we carry by Cinder currently is the Dry Viognier. So they have a couple different renditions of the Viognier. It can be very sweet, it can be off dry, or in this um, particular version, it is dry. So it is not sweet at all. In my opinion, this is a perfect summer wine, particularly for sitting out on our beautiful patio on a summer evening, eating, sipping a glass of this with some of our steamer clams or another nice buttery seafood dish. I just think it's the perfect combination. Of all the cinder wines I've tried so far, I don't dislike anything. They're absolutely incredible and that's what I love about them is I am completely supportive of Idaho wines and I'd really like to see us grow our spot on the map in the, the winemaking world and I believe Cinder is one of those wineries that is just nailing it and represents Idaho very well so I'm, I'm proud to be associated with the name and carry it at our restaurant. Idaho wines are all very distinct. Each wine it really represents the soil that it's grown in. So the soil around the Snake River Valley is a volcanic soil and it's also ancient lake bed. So all of those aspects go into making a unique flavored grape itself. Um, the cinder wines for me are very crisp, clean, well balanced, and extremely aromatic. And I just think they represent the full spectrum of the quality you would expect in a really nice wine. I have been a huge fan for going on four years since I discovered the wine. I believe they started the vineyard sometime around 2005 or 2006 and by 2009 they were recognized as one of the up-and-coming wineries in Idaho and so it started catching on as a trend in Boise when I was living in that area and all of the high-end restaurants downtown were wanting to sell the cinder wine. Uh, the winemaker herself started out making wine in Washington for um, Chateau St. Michel and also for the Canoe Ridge line so she is very experienced and also has a background in agriculture so and biology so she's just really dialed in to the terroir that she's working with and the different types of varietal that will be successful in the in the snake river american viticultural area one thing i think is really neat is the name cinder comes from the soil where they grow the grapes and what i was explaining about it being an ancient lake bed but it's also a volcanic area. So cinder itself is created and lies under the soil where all of these vineyards exist. And it was created through the process of the volcanic eruptions taking place under the water and it creates little blocks of cinder. And any wine, is, like I said, is going to pick up those flavors and minerality of the soil. And so I, when I look at the label, I imagine this, the word cinder itself, as the grape vines. And I just envision this as the field. And then below here, the line, it reminds me of just the little layer of soil where right below would actually lie the cinder itself. And I, I just, I think it's beautiful and artistic and simple at the same time. And 
I love the fact that they use that for the name because all those flavors are what creates these incredible grapes. So one of the things that I really love about all of the cinder wines that I've tried is that the winemaker herself, Melanie Krauss, focuses on bringing out the best, truest expression of each grape. From the intense aromas to a smooth and seamless mouthfeel and a clean, bright finish. All of the grapes are just incredible. I can't find one that I don't like of all the vintages and all the varietals that I've tried. I'm just a fan through and through. I think she is a very driven and passionate woman and I admire and respect her. Um, so she started out with a um, internship or um, as an apprentice for Chateau St. Michel and worked also with the Canoe Ridge line in Washington and with her background in agriculture as well as her degree in biology and Spanish, which helps her in communicating in the vineyards sometimes. Uh, she just has really dialed it in. She um, shopped for a while before she chose Idaho to begin her own vineyard because she had such confidence and interest in our terroir around the Snake River Valley American Viticultural Area. And I really think that was a wise decision. Um, Tempranillo, Malbec, Viognier, Riesling, those grapes are all extremely successful and produce very well in this area. And those are a lot of the grapes that she's choosing to make her wines with. So it was definitely a very well thought out, educated decision and it's paying off. You know, this, this wine is a very clean, crisp, easy pairing wine for me. It's one of those wines in the summertime, it's going to shine. You can drink it by itself. You can pair it with light seafood dishes. You can pair it with salads, uh, raspberry chicken salad, uh, goat cheese and strawberries, just any, any type of light cuisine. It's just a really easy and um, flexible wine for food pairing, or like I said, even by itself. When we feature a wine, we like to give a really nice description of the wine to begin with, so they know what they're getting into. There's never going to be a mystery when they actually taste it. The descriptions are accurate, they know what to expect, and this wine just never lets you down. Uh, every guest we had that ordered it, really enjoyed it. We went through um, two cases over the course of two weeks, which is quite a bit of wine, considering all the other wines we sell at the same time. So when, when it was featured, it sold and people loved it. And I would really hope to bring on another one of the cinder wines, like perhaps the laissez-faire red blend or the white blend, uh, of course the Tempranillo, which I'm totally in love with. And I know they have a new rosé that's coming out that I am super excited about and will be a perfect summer wine. So I'm just waiting to get my hands on that. You can control the sweetness by the length of the fermentation process. So the fermentation process is where the yeast dissolves the sugars and as that goes on, you can either pull the wine from the fermentation process when there's still a lot of residual sugar, leaving you with a sweet wine, or you can allow the fermentation process to go further to where you have a wine that's almost just bone dry. There's no residual sugar whatsoever. So that's why you can take a grape varietal like the Viognier or a Rosé or really any type of wine and control the path of its fermentation process and choose to pull the grape and bottle it at a certain sugar content level. So, um, the rosé that they're, they're making is going to be very dry. So it will have a lot of that tart, crisp uh, acidity. However, it's going to be crisp and clean with a smooth finish. And the way a rosé is created, um, a rosé can only be made with red grapes because the pigmentation of the wine comes from the skins themselves. Mm -hmm. So when a rosé is pressed and crushed, they really only let that wine rest on those skins for just a few hours because much more than that, a few hours or a day or two, is going to pull almost all of the pigmentation out of the skins and the seeds and then you're going to have a much higher tannin level and you're losing the rosé quality of the wine and it becomes a red wine.
Definitely our Viognier um, and Syrah are just kind of our flagships. They sell super well. I think it's what Idaho is going to be known for in the future, along with, you know, varietals like Tempranillo and Malbec and Riesling. I think those are varietals we do super well. But one that I think is just, you know, completely flies off the shelf is our rosé. It's a dry style rosé. It's not sweet at all. But uh, we sell out in a month almost every year. So we release it and then it's out in a month. So people come in, they know it's kind of this hidden like cult favorite of people's. So they come in and buy it by the case. So we do um, a lot of American oak, um, but we also do a lot of stainless steel, which is it, you know, there's, uh, they're very different experiences from one another. Um, we do all of our whites in stainless steel, besides a little bit of Chardonnay in barrel, um, that we keep it pretty traditional with that. Um, but stainless steel with whites just keep them um, so fresh and kind of contain all of the aromas because barrels are so porous. Um, there's a lot of kind of oxygen exchange happening there, which um, the thing, you know, with wine, the most delicate molecules are the aroma molecules. So we want to keep all of those aromas kind of locked tight in this stainless steel environment. That way when we do filter it and everything, they still contain all of those really amazing aromas um, that come from fermentation and the grape themselves. Um, but for the most part, we use American oak. We also do Hungarian oak and French oak in some amounts. And we also just experimented last year with um, uh, not even oak, it was actually acacia wood. So we did a little, we did one barrel of that in our Chardonnay program and it was amazing, it was super fun. But oak is the most traditional, you know, it's been used for, you know, thousands of years. Um, and we, you know, keep to that tradition a little bit. Last year I took about two tons of Syrah, like two metric tons, right? <laughs> so about 4,000 pounds of Syrah co-fermented it with Viognier, which we normally do. We did a huge saunier with, with it, which is we essentially bleed off uh, quite a large portion of the juice as soon as we distem it, which creates a higher extraction. So there's less juice, but there's more skin to juice uh, contact and ratio. In the wine world, right, you've got whites and reds, and you've also got rosés. Um, all of them come in from the, all of the grapes, white or red, come in from the vineyards and they all go through, you know, a similar process. The whites, you know, we bring in and immediately press. We don't allow any juice to skin contact, really. Um, you know, with a couple of varietals we do, like Riesling and Gewürztraminer, but the reason we don't do a lot of skin contact with whites is the skins hold tannins. It's not preferable. Every year, just on average, uh, you know, I babysit about 35,000 gallons of wine. Thank you.